Once upon a time, it would sound like a fairy tale to hear that Android apps could run quite well on your Windows desktop, PC, laptop, tablet, or what have you. But as of today, 2022, Android apps are actually very accessible on Windows 11. And you can do this really, there's a few different ways, but there's primarily like two good ways to run Android apps on your Windows 11 desktop. Before we go, any further, I do want to say big shout out and thanks to Daniel Harris for suggesting the subject matter of this video. And on this video, we're going to talk about which one I think is better between your two primary options, which are running Android apps through the Amazon App Store beta, which is available in the Windows Store. Now you can go there, you can download it. I've talked about it a million times or streaming Android apps from your Microsoft Surface phone or your Samsung device to the Microsoft Your Phone app. I know that doesn't sound like it would be as good as running it actually on your hardware natively, but it actually is really good. So let's dive into this. Let's talk about which one I actually think is better. So on option number one, running it through the Amazon App Store beta, you can simply go to your Microsoft Store and search for Amazon App Store, and then you'll have a button to click on install. And once you're in there, let's go ahead and open this thing up. You're gonna have a thing that will pop up that will be loading the Android subsystem, Windows subsystem for Android, you see down there. Basically, it's booting up Android running in sort of a virtual machine. And once it boots up and it's running in the background, it's just there, it launched on the wrong monitor. Let's bring it over here. And then you get the Amazon App Store. Now there's not a lot in the Amazon App Store. It's kind of garbage. And I will link to a video in the description about how to circumvent this by sideloading something like the Aurora Store. So you basically have a third party app store full of other apps. The Aurora Store is failing to connect for me right on cue, right as I'm filming, good to see. But you can also, using the tutorial I will drop in the description, sideload individual apps as well, opening up the floodgates to many more apps than what is simply in the rather thin Amazon App Store. And let's load up an Android app so that you can see how this does in fact run. Let's launch TikTok, everyone's favorite social media app that I never look at. You can see as I scroll through these videos, it does run pretty well. Audio, everything works fine. The video works fine. I can move this thing around. I can do whatever I want with it. It basically runs like a native Windows application. So you may be asking yourself, what's the downside here? What's the problem? with running things this way. To me, the biggest problem is that they're kind of slow to start at the beginning, right? But then the other thing is, let's sort this by RAM usage, and you'll see this here. That is the RAM being used by the Windows subsystem for Android, right? And I'm gonna close out of TikTok, and let's see how far it drops, and you're gonna see, it's not gonna drop very far at all. That thing is using a lot of my RAM. Now I've got 32 gigs of RAM, I'm not that worried about it, but it's just chilling back there using some RAM and that's a lot of RAM. So the, the resources on it are pretty high. Now if I close WSA, close it out, that RAM usage drops to zero, but then anytime I need to launch an app, it's gotta fully boot that thing. Remember that box that popped up? It was you know, booting into Android essentially? And we have to do that every time. So you would wanna theoretically leave this running in the background so there is a bit of a resource hog going on back there that you won't have streaming the apps. Well, let's talk about streaming the apps. How do you do this? How does it work? Well, it's actually really, really simple, but there is a pretty major prerequisite for this. You need to have a Samsung phone, a more modern Samsung phone, or a Surface device, Surface Duo or Surface Duo 2. That's pretty much all that's gonna work for this thing. But if you have those things, and you go to the Microsoft Store, you're gonna look for an app called Your Phone. It's probably already installed on your computer, but if it isn't, go get it. And then on your actual phone, if it's a Samsung device or a Surface device like this, it probably is also already installed, but you'll see the Your Phone app in the App Store. Go through the setup, linking your computer and your phone together. It's super simple. I've shown it in other videos. You really can't mess it up. And once it's done, you will wind up with a setup quite like this, where you have all the apps on your phone right here. So let's scroll down and let's pick TikTok here just because we're gonna keep things the same. So we're gonna double click on TikTok and you're gonna see whoop, that it is saying we need permission to display apps 
from your phone. So on our phone, if we switch to the overhead camera, you will see here this thing pop up and says, start recording or casting with link to Windows. And it says, allow until next restart. That's important because it means exactly what it says. You don't have to do this every time. So let's allow until next restart. And then your screen should go black like this. I like to just leave my phone kind of sitting here like this. You can hear audio was probably playing out of there. That's one of the things we're gonna talk about here. Let's go back now to our page here and you're going to see that TikTok is running just fine. I can move this thing around. I can resize it. You do notice that it is maintaining the sort of resolution, the size of the screen, the shape of the screen, the aspect ratio is the word I'm looking for, of Surface Duo, which I quite like. It performs well and everything works exactly like it should. Pretty much works exactly like it did while running through WSA. The biggest difference here, though, is that the audio is going to be coming out of my phone. Now, I don't know if there's a way to fix this to make the audio actually come out of my computer. But for me right now, audio is coming out of my phone. I would love to know if some of you guys have figured out some weird setting here. I don't think it exists. The only setting I see here that's pertinent is the one to stop hiding your phone screen, which you can just swipe up to go home and get rid of that anyways. What we're talking about here is this thing. You can just go home. And then at that point, I'm able to use my phone and do whatever I want while TikTok is still there running. So that's, I'm not sure why you would want to toggle that off or on. Doesn't seem like it really matters. You will see that I just now locked my phone and then that popped up. So I have to actually leave the phone unlocked for the apps to be accessible. So again, that's something that you might want to keep in mind if you're worried about your phone going dead or you want to use your PC's speakers. Those are probably the two biggest concerns there. Now, what are the advantages of doing this? For one, the overhead in terms of resource management is effectively zero. Let's look at what this is using. If I sort by RAM, the Orphone app is using 236 megabytes of RAM. So effectively not mattering at all and in terms of cpu usage it was 0.1 percent so overhead for that is zero so if you're on a lower end computer this is going to be the way to go the other advantage of this is that you're already signed into all of your apps and to me this is the biggest advantage of this everything's already there it's synergy let's test this out by sending myself an email and this will make sense in a second so if we go back over here, we will see this email. Now watch this. I can archive, delete, reply, whatever. But if I click on the email, what's going to happen is Outlook is going to open up on my phone in the app and it is right there for me to interact with and respond to. And that is true of everything. I get a Nest notification on my cameras. I click it. The Nest app just opens there in that window on my phone, already logged in, already ready to go. I don't have to see the notification, hit start, go to Outlook. I, I can just click on the notification. And for me, I keep on my second monitor the Your Phone app all the time because I'm already there for my text messages. And now my notifications are right there. And again, they just launch effectively Basically, it's like this. I get a notification on my phone. I'm on my computer. I have to stop, pick up my phone, do whatever I need to do, put it back down. Here, I can get a notification on my phone, look over, click the notification. Here's another one from Twitter. Let's let's just open it. There it is. I can just go straight into whatever I was doing without having to stop using my mouse and keyboard. I'm in my flow still. I can just interact with the Android apps, interact with my phone's notification in a direct way like this without ever having to change what I'm doing. And that is a really big advantage to me. Now, if you're looking for the best multimedia experience, probably running it natively or whatever you're gonna call it, it's not really natively, but you know what I mean, running it on Windows itself, probably the better way to go simply because you're not using your phone speakers, you're using your computer speakers. That's definitely true. I do also wanna point out that you do have the ability to straight up just cast your entire phone screen. Again, it needs to be unlocked to do this, but there you go. There's the entire phone screen. And of course, this can be resized and done however you want to do it. And this gives you certainly a bit more flexibility than you would get in just the app alone. It just gives you more options. So honestly, I think that there are good reasons to use both. And definitely there are some advantages for the Windows subsystem for Android, but I find myself exclusively streaming apps from my phone itself for the things the reasons mentioned in terms of the multimedia apps you know the speaker thing i just don't really use those this way 
it's just they aren't they don't tend to be apps i'm going to use like i'm not going to do youtube right tiktok isn't an app i look at the other day i was like oh it might be cool to like pull up the espn app to stream a ufc event and then i quickly realized well their website's better for a computer like this why, why wouldn't they just use that so that doesn't really come up for me but you may be different i'd love to know what you guys think about this in the comments down below Thanks for watching this little back and forth comparison between running Android apps directly on your Windows PC or streaming them via the Your Phone app. Obviously, the Your Phone app thing is only going to be accessible to a subset of people. So that's another big problem with it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. I'll see you on the next video. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.